All right, so for problem number six, it asks, what is the velocity of the maximum ebb current 1.1 miles east-northeast of Little Gull Island in the afternoon of 25 April 1983? Interesting problem. We're going to need to use the tidal, tidal current tables for this. And it's not as intimidating as you might think. Um, if you need to do a full-on tidal current calculation for the navigation general section, usually in the navigation problems section, like the chart plotting, they're not going to be as intense. Um, so if you need a basic refresher on tidal current or tide problems, there's a lot of good videos online. The Northeast Maritime Institute has a great one. Um, I'll put a link in the video description. But here's how we're going to solve this problem. So um, the strategy here is that um, the way tidal current tables work is that there is, say, a couple of base stations. And all around them are, you know, little stations, station one, station two, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the book is not super thick. And the reason that it's not super thick is that it really only gives you values for these. And then it gives you correction factors uh, for these here. So your job is to pick the station that you're looking for, find the base station, and then use the ratios to correct that to get your tidal currents that you want, right? So in our case, we're looking for 1.1 east northeast of Gull Island, right? So we need to find that, first of all, and get the uh, correction factors. Sorry. And then we need to find out what is the base station for uh, Little Gull Island. Is it, say, the race or is it, say, um, the Cape Cod Canal, for instance, right? So once we find this and find this, we can get some information here, use our correction factors and get our answer that we're looking for. Cool. So digging into the book, we actually don't need the chart for this at all. Um, the book is laid out in three three main sections. In the front part are the, um, the reference stations, so Cape Cod Canal, the race, Chesapeake Bay. Um, in the middle is the, the um, table two, the current differences. And so here, you know, there's Chesapeake Bay, but Delaware Bay. You know, here is Gardner's Bay, Block Island Sound, all the stations that are in there. And so you could kind of go through this and find um, Little Gull Island, but the easiest way to do that is to use the third section of the book, which is the index in the back, so the index to stations. So if I want my station from Little Gull Island, according to the exam, then I need to go in the back, I find Little Gull Island, and it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five reference stations uh, for that, 2281, 2301, et cetera, et cetera. And so you take these numbers and you go to this section two, table two, and you find it. So the first number that it gives me is 2281. So I'm going to look that up, and the numbers are over here on the left. 2281. Little Gull Island, 3.7 miles east-southeast of. That's not the one that I want. So I'll continue to go back here and find the stations until I get the one that I want. The one that I want is actually over here. Little Gull Island, 1.1 miles east-northeast of. So again, for a testing strategy, I'll double check that I got the right reference station. And then I'm gonna need this data a little bit later. So I'm gonna put a little bookmark in here. And then I look up here and it tells me that these values are on the race, page 34. So the race is my base station and this is my, my corrected factor. So first thing I'm gonna do is go over to the base station on page 34. And so here's the race, uh, Long Island Sound, 1983. It's listed by month, so in the exam it tells me that I'm looking for April 25th. So here's April 25th. And this is um, where we need to read the question very carefully, because it says the maximum ebb current at this station on the afternoon of 25 April 1983. Okay, so what I'm gonna write down then is, uh, here's the race, 25 April, 83 and it says in the afternoon 
the maximum ebb in the afternoon. So on the 25th, it looks like to me that there's a max ebb here in the morning and another one in the afternoon. This is higher, but I'm asked for the afternoon one. So at 13.15, there's an ebb current of 4.2 knots ebb. Okay, great. Um, so that's the base. If I go back to my correction factors, I've got this. I'm good to go. Now I need to get the correction factors for this one. And on Little Gull Island, 1.1 miles east-northeast of, there's some data here, the position, the minutes before. Like if you were solving a full-on uh, tidal current problem, you'd need all this stuff. But all we really need is the speed ratios. So it says that uh, the speed ratio for Little Gull Island 1.1 east-northeast is 1.3 knots for the ebb. Actually, I'm sorry, it's not 1.3 knots, it's 1.3 correction factor. So what we need to do is take the maximum ebb for the race, apply our correction factor, and that gives us our maximum value. So 4.2, and we multiply these correction factors, is um, an answer of 5.46 knots. Should be our final answer. So going back to the exam and looking at what they give us for choices, we see that the closest answer is 5.5 knots. And you might be inclined to throw that away because it's hard you know, we don't often see currents at 5.5 knots, but in that area of the world, in Block Island Sound, um, there is really intense currents uh, through the race. So our final answer is going to be choice A, 5.5 knots. Okay, so for problem number seven, it's pretty straightforward. It says at 10.16, our position is X and Y. At 11.16, which is exactly one hour later, our position is a different X and Y. What was the course made good between the two positions? And important to look at um, in the answers, all of the answers are listed in degrees true. So that no means that we don't have to do any kind of compass correction in this problem, which is great. So the strategy for this problem is just to plot the two positions, measure the bearing from position A to position B, and then look at the answers and select the best answer. So I'm going to go ahead and plot those now. Um, we're again going to be on the Block Island chart and looking at the positions. I can tell we're going to be somewhere down in this vicinity. So let us do that. Okay, so I have our positions plotted, and we'll note the times there. Uh, this was 1016, and this one was 1116. So the last part of the problem is just measuring the bearing from one to the other. And so I'll line up the black line on my triangles, and then I'll slide this over to the nearest meridian. Make sure the vertex is on the meridian and read out the bottom, and I come up with a value of 132 degrees true. And so if I look at the answers, uh, that's exactly an answer. So oftentimes um, that might cause me to double check things, but uh, if I look at the other answers, they're all pretty close. So it's I think this is an exercise in precision plotting, and uh, my answer was correct. So I'll double check, make sure I got the right positions. It seems pretty simple. Um, but that would be the choice that I would go with, choice D.